In this video, we'll focus on how to use the VLOOKUP to search for specific values and how to calculate the average sale per product. So imagine this, you're the sales manager here and you want to track right now how many sales you made and how many sales for what is the best selling product and how much you earn per product. So how to do that? Well, first of all, we need to get all these values here and we need to calculate also all the values per product. And right now you see this is a small list. Imagine your list is thousands of rows. You cannot do it manually, so everything must be automatically. So the first thing what you need to do and what you need is what we call a list with all the products. Yes. So we have right now we have only six products, and we know that each product is a specific has a specific name. So the product name apples, number two is oranges. Number three is kiwi, or grapes, sorry, grapes, and number six is kiwi, I see. Number four, and if you wonder where did I get this information, it's all here. However, we will not get it from here, and that's very important. I will explain to you later on why. So we have here number four, lemons, and number five is, let's search for number five here. So there's no number five, but I know number five was melon. So you might wonder, all right, why do we have this here and why we don't get this data here? There's a reason for that is, and the reason is very uh, specific. Your sales record might change all the time. So it can change uh, a lot of things and maybe the product names changes and everything. However, you, if you have a stock control function or method, you probably will check your stock and you have a list of all the products you order. This is very important. So if you would wonder, bookkeeping, stock control, sales, and purchasing is, are basically all one system because both are rematched together. The stock indicates how many products are in, are in stock and once there's a sale, it will indicate which product has been sold, so what happens to the stock, and the stock will change. Same as well, if you buy, or if you order a new bunch of apples, what happens then is that your stock will increase by the amount of apples you ordered. And, if, and the bookkeeping gets all the data based on sales and purchasing in finances. So basically, stock control controls the quantity of the products, and the bookkeeping will control the financial part of the products so how the money goes in and out all right however that is for future right now we are not focusing on that but there's a course coming out so what we're going to do now is very simple we're going to calculate this by using the vlookup and imagine this is your list of products with all the products that we have right now so i'm going to put this a nice input here and I'll make this a nice design as well. Product ID, I'll call this. And here, product name. So what's very useful here is that imagine you want to change this from apples to apples green or granny smith. You can always change that. Then you can all, then it will automatically would be adjusted here eventually. So that's very important because eventually you might improve your product name. So imagine here we have now our product. So we have this, but we don't want this to be just in here like copy paste. No, everything must be matched with each other. So what we want to do here is we just want to get the value of product one. And that product one should indicate what product it is. So we use your VLOOKUP. So product ID number one. So let me explain it by opening our formula too. Formula Builder. In the Formula Builder, we'll have to get the lookup value. We say number one, or in this case, we can even hard code it here, but I would not recommend that. There should be here. I'll just add a new inserted row. Here we should have one, two, three, four, five, six. This could be even this. This is this product ID, and then we have the row. Because there should not be anything different. It should be all connected with each other. So it will automatically 
automatically adjust if product ID here would be number two. You will see that things will change as well. All right. So now let's focus on the VLOOKUP. And on the VLOOKUP, we have the formula builder. So what is the value? This is the value we want to search. We use a table array. In this case, this is our table array. And the column number, which column has the value? Please note, this and this, the product ID, the, the matching value that we're searching for, like the number one and matching in this, should always be the first one in the table. So if apples would be first and product ID would be after that on the second column, you will have an issue because it doesn't work. This, if you want to search this value, must be always here as the first one as well. All right, so that's very important. So what do we say here, what is the column index number? In this case, it's number two. Range lookup, no, we want the ex exact match. Meaning that if we have number one, it should be number one. If we have number 1.1, if it doesn't show, it should be shown as not available. So enter, now we're done. You can see here, we're done here, let's close this. Now we have this almost, we're almost done here. And now we can drag this, but before we drag it, we need to freeze the cell. So we do here F4 and F4, so it will freeze these values. And let's draw, draw, drag this down. You can see now instantly it will get all the values. The next part, what we want is we want to calculate the values based on matching value here. So if product ID matches, then we should calculate. So for example, here for apples, and it's not Granny Smith apples, but apples. All right, so apples should be here as well as apples 15. And then you see somewhere else, again, apples plus 8. And then again, plus 22, plus 21. So what we do here is we use here the, the sum if formula. And then we have here the range. So let's open up our formula builder. So what is the range? In this case, the range is from product ID to total sales. Yes, so that's because the matching product ID and the sales are important. The criteria. So what is the criteria? We want to search for everything that is matched with product ID number one. And then finally, you have the sum range here. And the sum range is the total sales. So that's what we want to calculate. So we enter. And now you can see we have a total amount of $66. So this works perfectly. Before we drag this, same story, we need to freeze the cells. So we will freeze this one, and we will freeze the purple one. So the blue blue array and the purple rows and column, we need to, to, to freeze. So enter, once we did this, let's drag this down. Now you can see here the total, you can see melon is zero because five number five does not exist, no cells. Next here, dollars. And now we have exactly the values here. So this is the way how you can calculate the average sale per product. And now you can ask yourself which product is a good product to sell. So you can see instantly Kiwi is interesting and oranges is interesting. And apples as well. And after that, these here and definitely melon right now is not selling at all. So this is how you can do it. And in the next video, we'll go a bit more deeper. So if you like videos about Excel, where you can do your stock control and your bookkeeping and everything all together, check out my Udemy courses. Click on the link below and you can find all the courses we have.